In this model, I'm going to walk you through our four different options for sources for token creation in our process flow. We have the inner arrival source, the scheduled source, the date time source, and our event triggered source. So I'm going to talk about each of these and with the date time source, I'm going to talk about two different use cases associated with those. So the first one we're going to focus on is our inner arrival source. An inner arrival source allows you to specify the time between arrivals of tokens into your process flow. So in this case for this model, I currently have it set up with an inner arrival time of 3, 6, 4 that's triangularly distributed, 3 being the minimum, the maximum being 6, and 4 being the mode. And those are in minutes. You can see that unit here. And so we're going to have tokens arrive using this distribution. You can also put in a solid value here if you don't want to put in a distribution for the inner arrival time. So I've set it up as well so it has a dashboard that'll show us a histogram of those inner arrival times. So we're able to see if we get that three to six with a mode of four. So if I reset and run this, and I'm gonna run it pretty fast so that we can kind of start filling out this dashboard. Um, You'll notice that I have a minimum of about three at this point, a max of six, and we've kind of got this mode building around four here. Um, as it runs, it'll kind of make that four be more prominent the more, um, or the more data we have added to this histogram and inner arrival times. So that's our inner arrival um, source. It'll do the time between arrivals. The next source we have available is called our scheduled source. What a scheduled source allows you to do is specify a time and a quantity of I tokens that will arrive at the given time. So in this case, I have at 10 minutes, I'm going to have two items arrive. At 20 minutes, I'm going to have two items arrive. And at 30 minutes, I'm going to have two items arrive. By default, this table automatically has a time a name and a quantity, but you're also able to add labels. So I've added three labels to this, to this um, schedule. So at time 10, we'll actually have two of type one come in. At time 20, we'll have two of type two, and at 30, we'll have two of type three. So again, you can specify these values. Uh, um, these quantities can be solid values like this, or they can also be distributions. If you'd like, you can also make your types be distributions as well if you don't want to have a quantity come of a specific type. So in this case, though, I've also set up a dashboard. Let me reset it so we can kind of see. I'm going to run it slower this time. And we'll see at um, 10 minutes, we should have two or three. We have two reds come in. So you can kind of see here, we've got two reds. Now you have one and then 10 minutes later, two greens and then two blues. And on this schedule, I've also set it up so it's repeating. So it will re repeat this schedule over and over again. So that's why you see two reds, two greens, two blues, two reds, two greens, two blues, reds, greens, blues so on and so forth. So this schedule will keep on going as long as I want it to because I have that schedule repeating. The next um, token creation source I'm gonna talk about is my date time source. Now this is a very robust source. Um, a date time source actually has its own window that opens um, when you click on that edit arrivals and in here, you get the ability to change a lot of things about how the source functions. The first is you get to specify uh, in here the arrival time, a start and end time for arrivals. You have a quantity associated with that, and you have a name available to those tokens. You can also add in labels like we did on the schedule source. So in this case, um, between 8 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the afternoon, because we use military time, we're going to have 25 of type 1 arrive. 
between 8 and 4 o'clock, we're going to have 50 of type 2. And 8 and 4 o'clock, we're going to have 30 of type 3. So you can specify solid values for quantities, or you can specify distributions, like we could do on the scheduled source. Um, in here, you get to specify a time mode. This time mode allows you to say if this time is based off of starting from time zero, or if you want to use it as an actual clock time. So I have it set to use model start date slash time because I want it to be an actual clock time for these. You can specify as many rows as you want. So I can have as many rows as I want. They can be overlapping. They could be one after the other. It really doesn't matter. I also have it repeating daily. So it'll repeat the schedule every single day. You can also specify how many times you want that schedule to repeat. So if you want it to keep on going, as long as you run the model, you can keep this indefinitely. Or if I only want to run this twice, I can put a two in there. Down here at the bottom, you also have arrival spacing options. So you, in this case, I'm going to have them evenly spaced out between eight o'clock and four o'clock in the afternoon. You can also have them arrive at a scheduled time, which I'll actually use in the next example. And you can also have them arrive randomly throughout that time interval. So this one just kind of shows you um, how to use it as a time interval option. If you don't want to worry about setting this up yourself, we also have the ability to auto-generate it for you. So if you want to do hourly arrivals, you can. You can do it in different arrival increments. And you can do it for a day or you can even do a week schedule if you'd like. So it gives you that ability to automatically create this and then you can just fill in those values if you want. This also can be imported from an Excel file if that's the way you want to go with it as well. So in this case, I'm just showing you how to use an interval to say I want so many things to arrive during that interval. This is a good one to use if you don't know the exact time things arrive, but you know how many arrive within a day. So for this example, to kind of demonstrate that, I have it set up so it had a certain quantity that arrived within a day. And I'm actually going to add in a stop time of one day so that you can see that after a day, I'm only going to have um, so many of each type. So again, those values were 25, 50, and 30. So if I reset and run this model, we're going to run it for that day. And at the end of the day, oh, I actually ran over an extra minute, so I started having things arrive already. So let's go and actually wind that clock back a few seconds. And now if I reset and run it again, you'll see I have 25 things arrive the first day, 50 things of type 2, and 30 things of type 3, which were the numbers we actually saw in that table um, that I had pulled up earlier. So the, you can use a date time source to do time intervals and a quantity that arrives within that time interval. A date time source can also be used to do things like appointments as well, which is the next thing we're going to focus on over here. So I'm going to reset my model. If I open up the properties window and open up the arrivals table, you'll see in this example that I've set the start, a start time of 8 o'clock and an end time of 8.05. 8 o'clock is going to be my appointment time, and 8.05 is kind of when I want my next appointment to be. So this is set up kind of similar to the last one, where the time mode is going to be that use to start time. And in here, I've got my appointment time and kind of an interval. I could do 8 o'clock here as well. Um, but by doing this, I actually help um, the table learn what I want it to do by clicking this up arrow, I can actually add in additional rows and it'll automatically create this interval so that I can have an appointment every five minutes like I'm doing in this example. Now in here, again, you have the start time, you have the end time, you have a quantity that you can have come at that appointment time. You get to specify a name. In this example, I've also set up a type, but I'm doing it by percentage to kind of show it could be a solid value or it could be a percentage. 
In this case, 25 are going to be type 1, 45% of the time it's going to be a type 2, 30% of the time it's going to be a type 3. I currently have appointments set up from 8 o'clock in the morning all the way until about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, like I kind of did with my inner arrival. But again, I'm going to have one thing arrive at each of these appointment times. I've also added the label of type, and then I also added a label so we know what the actual appointment time was supposed to be for these tokens. The way that I get it to behave like an appointment schedule is by having this arrival spacing set to at scheduled time. What this will do is have them come at the start time instead of coming sometime between that interval. I've also gone and added in some variability to these tokens arriving because if you're dealing with appointments, sometimes things are a little early, a little late. In this case, I've given it a three minute window both directions so I can have things arrive three minutes early or three minutes late. So if I reset and run this, and look at this dashboard. I've actually created a dashboard that records the appointment time and what time it actually arrived. And so this is all the tokens that arrived here. So we see the appointment time and what time they actually arrived. You'll see some of them are early, some of them are late. And then here, if we look at this district or histogram here, we can see that um, we have almost an even split between minus three minutes and three minutes late. And if I run this and add in additional days, we'll actually see that it kind of creates more of a box because I have that set up as a uniform distribution. The last source we're going to talk about is our event triggered source. And an event triggered source allows you to create tokens based on something else that's happening in your model. So in this case, I've currently created this 3D model here where I have tokens come from my source into my queue and I've set it up so that every time something enters this queue it creates a token in my process flow. So this is actually a way you can tie a process flow in your 3D into the same model. So in this case if I click on this source what I did is I used this eyedropper here to select my staging queue and it's on entry trigger. So when something enters into that queue, a token will be created in the process flow. Now that token will automatically have a label on it that I called my item, and I'm going to set it to the item in the 3D so that I know what item created this token. And those tokens will come down here, and what you'll see, um, I have this dashboard here that'll show you the whip for these. You'll see something come in into the 3D. So this is my 3D model. And you'll see the same exact thing of the same exact type come into this whip trigger. And I've also set it up so my process flow will move things into this processing queue. And you can see that the color of the box in the processing queue will match the color of the token in this delay over here. So if I reset and run this, well, it'll go, let's slow it down you'll be able to see when the first thing comes in, right, I got a green, I've got reds and blues, but you'll notice that you see the same exact thing in the process flow as you do in the 3D. So if I stop my model right now, you'll notice I've got a green token on my, trying to, sitting in the staging queue, so I've got my green token here, and then I have a blue token in the queue here because it's the one currently being processed. So those are the four different sources and different uses that you can use them for to be able to create tokens in your process flow.